What's good, Titans? It's your most hated kaiju power scaler, King Churros here. And yes, you read the title right. We are doing 10 battles, which, yes, I know it sounds insane, but it's okay to get a little crazy sometimes. We're going to be going over every Titan's stats and every Titan's feats to determine some true winners. Who's going to be the king of the monsters and who's going to end up like some losers? <laughs> The iciest titan of all time and the second oldest titan after Duke Din. Wait, no wait, wait. Wait, no wait, wait. Comes across the certified Godzilla hater Muto Prime. Two of some of the largest titans Godzilla has ever faced. But the question is, who's the bigger threat to Godzilla? And uh, who set Muto Prime up? Oh, it was me. Yeah, let's address the queso in the room. Shimo decimates Muto Prime and it's not even close. Muto Prime is her for real, don't get me wrong. She successfully defeated 17 of Godzilla's cousins and gave Godzilla one of his toughest battles, literally ripping his back apart from a screech. She might be louder than me. Is that one no. cooking? But despite her very good performance, Shimu's just built different, taking on an even stronger Godzilla in his evolved state. You see, it's been confirmed Godzilla in his base 2014 state is already stronger than Prime. And you take into account Godzilla stronger in 2019, and his Prime 2027 self would be above his 19 self. And then you add the nuclear power plant app that already pushes him past his base, and then there's the Evolve, which is above that. And you know what? Shima was out here launching this Evolve Godzilla into the air and basically KOing him. She even takes a blast from his supercharged spiral ray and was perfectly fine afterwards. Muto Prime out here getting tagged by a slower Godzilla while Shimo's keeping up with a faster Goji. I see Shimo outspeeding Muto Prime and probably freezing her before Muto Prime even gets a chance to attack back. Muto Prime being leagues below Evolve? Is it even a question? Shimo wins. Low diff. Spiders. You're scared of them, your mama's scared of them, your 15 step cousin from North Korea scared of them, and as for me, I'm not scared of them. Let's just tarantulas. I'll turn it to the black shaggy and no, no, not that one. And hit the jets away from it, especially if it was over 300 feet. Especially if it was over 300 feet. Especially if I'm talking about the female Muto and Scylla. Scylla and the female Muto are the two spider-like titans of the monsterverse. I thought this would be a cool fight purely off of aesthetics alone. The female Muto being a natural enemy to Godzilla and his species who desires to just have some babies. And then there's Scylla who's been trying Godzilla over and over and over again. Scylla took on Godzilla during Dominion and she didn't do terrible. She actually drew some blood from him and made him tap in a little bit. Making Godzilla bleed is a pretty impressive feat. And then GXK she... Oh. Uh, as for the female Muto, she was also getting cooked by Goji. But once her mans came sliding through for her, she put in some work, causing Godzilla to bleed and even knocking him down with a bull tackle. So as you can see, both are definitely not Godzilla tier, but hey, they can be lethal given the right circumstances. So that should make them pretty equal, right? Well, considering Scylla only did semi good against Godzilla when he was on one HP, it's not that good of a look. Then female Muto, who passively nerfs Godzilla, was still getting bodied. It's not that great either. Godzilla wasn't at his peak yet either as well, so uh, nah, good look female Muto. But despite that, I'd still give it to the female Muto. Even though Goji's atomic breath was nerfed, it's still pretty good that she took a blast from it, even though it put her right to sleep. And she was causing damage to a more energized Godzilla, which isn't saying much when he's literally nerfed throughout the fight, but he's likely in a better condition compared to his Dominion self, who's starving and haven't had rest in years. The female Mila's claw should definitely cut into Scylla's. She should be able to just physically overpower her considering she can do the same to Godzilla with an assist. Scylla lacks those feats, but I wouldn't be in disbelief if she could harm the female Muto in return. And maybe she can use her webs to blind Muto and give her some free strikes. But taking both fights into consideration, I think the female Muto did slightly, slightly better. So I pronounce her as the winner. Admit to high diff. This next fight, I've seen a lot of interest in the comments. I have to agree with y'all, it's a pretty interesting fight. The Scar King, the evil ape who rules over an army, versus the rival, one of the only few titans who can brag about handing Godzilla an L. So when it comes to the monkeys, these two are some of the heavy hitters. But which of these great apes will win in a deadly fight? Let's find out. Glaze time! Scar King has one of the coldest intros I've seen in movies, period. He is the definition of aura. I mean, when your poster's talking about bow to your new king, you gotta be tough! <coughs> 
Scar King is stated to be the strongest of the current great apes, not including Kong. And speaking of Kong, Scar King was dominating him for the majority of their first battle, nearly choking him out of breath. This is super impressive when you take into consideration that Kong is implied to be the strongest of his species. Then Scar King continues to box with this Kong, even with the Beast Glove, taking the Thunder Punch even. As for the rival, he's him. He's one of the few, if any, Titans who gets a brag about folding Godzilla. Kicked him out of his own crib! The disrespect! And even in the beginning of Godzilla Dominion, Godzilla didn't even believe he could beat the rival yet. He had to lock in first. Even though Godzilla was fatigued, this is still really impressive when Godzilla was bullying all the other Titans in this weakened state. So does this ape who dropped Godzilla batter the evil king of the great apes? With how clean the rival put himself on a map, I still would have to favor the Scar King. Yes, I know bro got clobbered by everyone and their grandmama, but that's him getting clobbered by the top tiers and their grandmamas. As I mentioned before, Kong is referred to as the top tier of the Great Apes, and Scar King was close to beating him. Kong would be above the rival, especially when you consider he fought a stronger Godzilla than Beast Glove Kong, who can hurt an evolved Godzilla, doesn't instantly one-shot Scar King, who- That should tell you something! Now, I'm not saying Scar King is stronger or equal to Beast Glove Kong, but he definitely put up a fight. Not to mention, Scar King is extremely skilled, if not the most skilled Titan in the entire MonsterVerse with extremely fast combat and reaction times. His whip who can tear into Kong's skin should do the same with the rival. And if you allow Scar King to act, it's even worse for the rival. Lastly, I'd like to mention during the war with Godzilla, which nearly destroyed him by the way, Scar King more than likely did most of the damage considering he scales above the other apes. The rival may be physically superior to Scar King, but Scar King should outskill, outspeed, and outdamage him with his weapons. Scar King wins mid to high diff. The War Bat. The Drowned Viper. Two Titans with atrocious names. Whoever named them, get that ninja out of the kitchen immediately! And let a real genius like me name them. Instead of War Bat, how about Big Snake with Wings? And as for the Drown Viper? Drake's me? I thought this fight would be pretty interesting considering they're both snake kaiju that Kong fly and both serve like mini bosses. So pretty much, which mini boss is stronger? The Drown Viper is larger in size and actually took on a stronger Kong. And for Nizuki, they nearly suffocated Kong. Kong, what's with you again, choke? Got something to tell us, buddy? This fight's basically gonna be a hug strangle fest. KSI versus Tommy Fury Part 2. But I'm gonna be honest, I favor Nizuki. This fight should probably be the closest I've covered so far. Drown Viper was kinda kinda relevant to Kong, spinning him around like they and dancing with the stars, okay I see you Vipes, and Warbat doing the same, but they do possess Venom, and as of right now there's nothing saying Drown Viper would be immune to Venom, so just off of this little cheat code, I'll put my money on Nizuki. Kong has been hitting the gym, he leveled up, got a brand new bust down Rolly, and now officially a king, he's up right now, but is he up enough to beat a version of Godzilla? You know, now that I think about it, I think he could! Wait, 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 guys, hear me out, hear me out! Oh, <laughs> oh come on, man! On a real note, though, I don't think Beast Glove Kong beats Evolve, Supercharged Power Plant Thermal, but Base, however... <laughs> come on, not again! To make it simpler, I'm choosing EMP Nerf 2014 to take Evolve Spy in Egypt, and Kong will have his axe charged up, too. And in this scenario, I find Kong coming out on top. Huh? In GVK, we established that Kong that is out of shape can outpace Goji in combat. And is anyone gonna argue 2014's faster? Then we take into account, as I mentioned a thousand times, Evolved is several layers above 2027 base, most definitely above 2014 base. So I just see Kong speed blitzing and hitting 14 like he Rock Lee. The axe provides protection from the nerf atomic breath and throws it right back at 14. Then the beast glove is to knock them ankles loose. <laughs> Even if 14 can land some physical blows, I'm pretty sure Kong would be fine. He's been tackled, suplexed, and stepped on by a stronger Goji. Then this is him not even two minutes later. So yeah, guys, I think Beast Glove Kong is taking the dub here. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Two thunderous titans who rules the sea. The Kraken and Tiamat. Two foes who took on the two main characters of the whole verse. But who wins? The Kraken, who got defeated by a not fully grown Kong with no weapons, or Tiamat, who took on a supercharged god's it's Tiamat. It's it's Tiamat. The bringer of darkness comes out of its shadowy prison to battle the shining light. 
the queen of the monsters. Out of these two flying titans with radically different views, who's the more powerful one? Mothra is queen of the monsters. Not Godzilla side piece, not a random moth, queen. This title have meaning with Mothra being a reliable ally to Godzilla throughout their history. Even in modern times, she still comes in clutch, whipping up great apes and even King Ghidorah. Also, her god ray flash thingy majigger can distort Shimo! She can run a prolonged fade with Rodan, and sadly, I have to say this in 2024, she, she won, won the, the fight. fight! I've been telling y'all Mothra is one of the greatest of all time, and nobody listens to me! I promise I'm not glazing. Mostly. Camazots. He may or may not be the cause of 2020, but he gave Kong the fade, screaming at him and stealing King Ghidorah's flow, dropping him from the sky. The same Kong is capable of staggering Godzilla and throwing around Warbats and other Titans. Kamzots is an alpha category of Titans, making him a pretty bad threat to a whole lot of Titans. Behemoth, you better get some down! But will Mothra suffer the same fate of darkness? In the fight, Mothra will come to the aid of Skull Island, and Kong isn't there for, uh, reasons. Amazots is larger in size and has an army to help him in this attack. His loud screech could possibly hurt Mothra, and his dagger tail might be lethal, cutting Mothra apart. But here's the problem. This Donnie's weak to light, and Mothra... Yeah, bro's at a huge disadvantage. Let's not forget, Mothra can part storms easily clearing Kamazot storms and exposing him to light. But also, her god race got evolved out like an ironing board. You think Kamazot's tanking that? <laughs> or how her god race stopped Shimo briefly? Ain't no way Kamazot's <laughs> gonna be affected the same, if not worse. Kamazot's is a flying brute, and a lot of titans would fear him. Mafra is not one of those titans. She was aiming to harm King Ghidorah before Rodan stopped her. She helped aid Godzilla against Ghidorah before, although no hard proof of what Mafra could do. Mafra could likely do some type of damage to Ghidorah, which Kamazot's ain't no Ghidorah. This fight is all in Mothra's favor. My goat Mothra wins yet again. Rodan, take the L. Rodan versus the Ion Dragon actually isn't new to my channel and a lot of people made sure to let me know that. Despite the fact though, I have made my opinion very clear. Can you please stop commenting? But has my opinion changed? Nah! Well, Okay, it changed a little bit, but I thought to go over the Rodan side of things and explain how he wins. Starting with the Ion Dragon, he began the short end of the stick. Yeah, Ion got chicken wing wishbone, but still, he was able to stumble Goji and damage his gills and munk, 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 eat the atomic breath. Although he was not looking good afterwards, he's still solid. But as for the fraud Rodan, just kidding y'all, we gassing him up today. Rodan swatting away jets and threatens to destroy the Argo. The same Argo that could take hits from Ghidorah's passive lightning. Rodan boxed Ghidorah himself. It didn't end well, but still we could give him props for stepping in the ring. He takes a gravity beam from Ghidorah too. Now King Ghidorah most likely wasn't trying to kill him according to the novel and how Ghidorah treats the other Titans, but if Ghidorah wasn't fully holding himself back, he, his gravity beam did hurt Godzilla. And Rodan gave Mothra a good fight. He still lost though, so don't you dare try it. Same Mothra who is a reliable ally to Godzilla and fought Ghidorah in the past. So despite how often I clown Rodan, he's still pretty solid. Now, the fight. Rodan charging right into the Ion Dragon. Rodan took Ghidorah, who's much larger and stronger than him, slamming right at him. So what's Ion doing? Nothing. And you got Rodan being the faster Titan, so he's landing way more hits. His volcanic heat could likely weaken Ion Dragon throughout the fight, giving Rodan even more reasons to win. And Rodan is taking beatings from stronger opponents, so what even Ion Dragon gonna do to him, bro? Come on now. So for the ones who wanted Rodan to get that W, here you go. Rodan wins, mid-difficulty. Okay, this next one might seem a little goofy. I understand. But I think Suko slams 2017 Kong. Uh, stop it, stop it. No, 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 don't go nowhere. I said what I said, and I'm standing on business. Suko knocked the doonies out of Baby Kong, and I'm gonna explain why. Baby Kong was ruling Skull Island at the, like, 14. Dog, if you don't get your license first. He's chowing down on Meyer squids, Ragdoll, and skull crawlers, and the events are set, killing Ramorak. Okay, my boy got some sauce, but he ain't got that Suko sauce. Suko is a trusted member of Scar King's Huntsman, handprints tatted and everything. Suko then blindsided Kong with that 80 inch vertical, get him to the NBA today! And he was so nasty with it that he, oh, uh, Oh, oh, oh no. Listen, this looks bad, but unironically, the fact that Suko's bones didn't snap in half from this shows how scarily durable this guy is. Not enough to convince you? I. Right. 
What about when he also survived the explosion of Shimo's crystal which sent Scar King Shimo and even Godzilla flying? Mind you, this is your boy. Suko's not only adorable, but he also got some hands too. He's chucking large boulders and hurting apes twice his size. He also defeated one eye who... Oh, nah. Oh, hell no. Whoever faded my mans up needs to be fired. That kitty deluxe cut gotta go. And thankfully, Suko one leg pushed him right off. To add some sugar to, Kong even acknowledges Suko as pretty strong. Listen, man. I know it sounds goofy, but considering Suko's bigger and dealt with far worse, I put my money on Suko. We have come down to our final battle, a battle of redemption. The two mechs of the verse, Mecha Godzilla and the Titan Hunter. Both have been clowned on pretty hard by the community. But today, I will bring one of them justice. Who wins? MG21 took on a tired Godzilla and quite literally wipes the floor with him and overpowered the infamous Hollow Earth drill with his proton screen. This would mean MG21 is far above any Titan who can't run the hands with a weathered down Goji. As for the Titan Hunter, he's literally built from a certified hater. It boogied down on Splinter Wilds, Warbats, and had a fight with Kong. The Hollow Earth was threatened by this dangerous mech. So which of these robotic Titans will come out on top if they were to clash? Well, for years, I had to sit in the sidelines and watch MG21 get bodied by everyone under 16 cousin from the pulp. Not today. The Titan Hunter is a fraud! Bro got most of his wins from off guard attacks and he got clapped by Kong with zero weapons. But KC, KC! Didn't MG21 get slapped by a weakened Kong? Yeah. But this is a Kong with a charged act and berserker rage in. MG21 also just outright put up a better fight than Titan Mech did. Not to mention, the Titan Mech couldn't even handle a Goji who's been on the chase for Scylla for weeks. MG21 has combat learning capabilities, missiles, a drill tail, hollow earth energy punches, and a proton screen. He outranges and weaponized the Titan Hunter, proving himself as a real robotic killer. Mecha Godzilla is the real mech most Titans would fear. And he got his first inverse W on the channel. Congrats, MG. He wins with mid difficulty. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree or disagree with the 10 battles? Which of the 10 battles was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, while you're there, might as well like and subscribe too. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And yeah, hopefully we have a great summer this year with the King Churros channel. Uh, hope you guys did well in school. I hope you guys are having a good time at work. You know, it's all good vibes here. Let's keep it pushing with all smiles and positivity. But with all of that out the way, I'm going to catch y'all later.